Okay. I hope you're ready for this because we're going deep today. We are going deep into the topic of sexual energy cultivation. We're going to talk about the Taoist path of sexual energy cultivation, uh, the tantric path as well. Some of the differences between these two, we're going to cover semen retention, non-ejaculatory orgasm, spiritual sex, all the good things, all, all the things that are wonderful and amazing. And let's get right into it. Brian from Seattle, what's up, brother? Thanks for joining. Okay, so first of all, thanks for joining everyone. Hope you guys are doing well today. This beautiful, this beautiful Friday here on planet Earth. <clears throat> so the thing is, is that for most humans in the modern world, most people in the modern world, sex is actually something that is unfulfilling and depleting for a lot of people. It's addictive. It's impulsive. It's never actually satisfying for them. And this is unfortunate because there's a lot of obsession around this. There's, there's, there's a strong desire around sexuality, but most people do not have fulfilling sexual experience in their lives. They don't really understand their sexuality. They don't understand like, what do I do with this? Where do I go with this? Why, why do I feel so limited in my sexual experience? Like, I mean, this was my experience. I was like, there has to be something more than just like what I've, what I've been experiencing as a man, these fleeting, short-lived ejaculatory orgasmic experience that's just leaves me wanting more, leaves me feeling empty afterwards. And the thing is, is that we were programmed into this. It's a control system. It's not difficult to see this when you really like step back and look at the big picture. You know, the porn, porn conditioning, all these things just shoved in our face, especially now, you know, to porn and all these things. And we live in an era of darkness. Humans' sexuality has become restricted systematically. And this turns you into a slave. They've got you by the balls. And again, it's easy just to like go your whole life doing these patterns because it's just normal to you. It's it. We are conditioned around this. And so we're just like, well, this is, yeah, this is just what sexual experience is. But it could be so much more. And it could lead you to so much higher levels in your health, in your enjoyment of life, in your consciousness, your spiritual path, your passion, your experience of pleasure, your experience as a human being. Everything can be 10x if you understand how to work with your sexuality and your sexual energy in a certain way. I truly feel that sex is an inner technology that was designed for healing, that was designed to empower us, to energize us, to fulfill us, to, to be a fuel for heightened creativity, for heightened accomplishment, heightened connection. When you transform your relationship to sexual energy, to your sexual experience, to a harmonious one, and what we'll talk more about what that means, then you can have unlimited amounts of amazing, multi-orgasmic, blissful, incredibly intimate, even lustful, you know, this full spectrum experience and very fulfilling sex. You can have all of it that you want and never ending well of it. And, you know, speaking to men, the main thing, one of the big things here is dropping the attachment to ejaculation. And here's the thing. Semen is a vital fluid. It's, it's, it's really interesting to me how, you know, all this, again, the normalization of frequent ejaculation for men. It's like when you really look at like, what is semen? Why does the body produce it? It's a vital fluid. It's a very vital fluid. It's the best of the best of what your body has because it's there to create life. It's there to, it's, it's your seed. It's the essence of your body. And so would we just like waste any other vital fluid? Like, you know, if you were bleeding out every day, if you were like releasing glandular secretions, spinal fluid every day. Like, of course, we wouldn't think that was like a beneficial thing to do. You know, you can give blood every like 12 weeks or something, but more than that, you're not, you're going to have problems. And so it's the same thing with your semen. It's a vital fluid. It is not a waste product. So to just be skeeting it all over the place every day, well, we'll just say it's not doing you any good. Okay. So and this is, again, we just, as men growing up in this world, we got duped into associating ejaculation as, as the only way to end sex. And we got us, we associated orgasm and ejaculation as being the same thing when, you know, as you probably know, if you've been following me, these are, these are two things that we can separate. And I'll talk more about that. So 
<clears throat> sexual energy, our sexual energy is our raw creative potential. It's, it's potential energy. It's, it's pressure. It truly is. I mean, what does it feel like to be aroused? It's an energy that wants to move you. It's an energy that motivates you to take action in some way. And unfortunately, it motivates a lot of men in, in a negative way. But it can influence you in a very positive way. Um, because most men, most, I mean, most humans are giving this energy away. They're giving away their sexual energy. They're wasting it. They're scattering it all over the place. And then wondering, well, why do I, why do I feel so depressed? Why do I feel so shitty? Why do I need to take all these medications? And, you know, why am I spending six hours a day staring in a phone screen? And so we can use this energy for other things. Instead of wasting it, you can redirect it, build it up within the body. And it's like investing in your bank account. And then you're gaining interest over time. And then you can spend that energy a bit a bit better, but with a bit more responsibility. You can do bigger things with it. Same thing with your sexual energy. When you're just skeet shooting every day, you're depleted. Your bank account's dried up, son. Like, what are you going to do? You're broke. So that's what's happening to, to men energetically. When you build up this energy and learn to redirect it, you can use it for other things. You can use it to enhance your creativity, your health, your athletic ab abilities, spiritual path, relationships, anything. It's an amplifier. And my journey with this, you know, I'll share a little bit about my journey on the path because give me one second here. So when I was getting into this work you know, over 10 years ago, there wasn't a lot of information out there. You know, there was, there was some books there was a little bit on the internet, but there wasn't much. Like, there's not a lot now, but there was even less, you know, 11 years ago when I was getting into stuff. And so I was really, I was truly fumbling around in the dark, you know, just searching for answers. Something was guiding me. Something was like, there's, there's more to sex. There's more to sexual energy. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. And it was that, it was that, that intention. I had a conviction to discover more about my sexual energy and how to use it how to use it a little bit wiser, how to use it in a bit more harmonious way. And so talking about, you know, I'm going to get, I'm going to get much more into like more specifics of sexual cultivation, but it's a path for men dropping the attachment to ejaculation and transitioning into a non ejaculatory sexual experience so that you can actually harvest energy from your sexual experiences, you can contain it, you can store it in the body, building up this pure potential energy, which then you can use for other things and you have more of it to use instead of just ripping out your, your vitality by the roots and throwing that away every time you have sex. You know, it, it doesn't make sense to do that. It's just habit. You got programmed into it. So you don't think twice, you know? So my journey of transitioning out of this pattern, it was an interesting one because right, right before I began, one of the things that drew me into this was that I was seeing, you know, I was being in my spiritual path. I was a few years into it and I was really seeing how I had these habits of mindless sexual indulgence. Just, I was impulsively watching porn, jerking off every day. Um, and there, but there was always a disappointment. Like, it felt really, you know, like, yeah, yeah, there's the initial excitement. Oh, yeah, I'm going to look at this porn video or even having sex. And then I would ejaculate. It was usually like five to ten minutes and it was over. And then I felt like, oh, I, want, uh, I wish I was back in that state of pleasure and arousal, but it's over. And I just felt fatigued. I felt empty. And because of this, I was doing other things that were depleting my energy. I was drinking alcohol. You know, I was, I was taking substances. I was getting high every day. And it was... I had, I was depleted. I had no willpower. I had no drive. I was going nowhere in my life. I was like just floating around, like just waiting for something. I don't know what I was, I was just waiting for something to change. I don't know what it was, you know? And so my transition, when I started practicing this work, practicing the things I'm going to share with you, in the beginning, obviously there's a transition point. I was still ejaculating, but I was at least like cutting it back. I was like, okay, every four days instead of every single day or twice a day. And I was starting to 
be aware of, of how important my semen was and how my sexual energy was and that I shouldn't just, again, ejaculate it recklessly. When I would end a, a, a session of sexual pleasure, sexual stimulation, and not ejaculate at the end, I was like, wow, I still have that feeling of arousal and like that aliveness. And then I would go out and do things with it. You know, I would, I would put it into creating music or like be out in the world, you know, doing the things I was doing, playing music, the things I was doing at the time. And I was like, I have a lot more energy. I have a lot, I have this like focus and clarity in this mm, mm, starting to have some testosterone because let me, you know, as a 22 year old man, my, my sexual vitality was dried up. I had shot that into a tissue and I was very feminine. When I started to retain my semen, when I stopped ejaculating so much, I started to feel like a man. I started to feel bold. I started to feel like this drive. I started to have a desire to do something with my life, to stop just fucking jerking off and doing stupid shit every day. And actually like, hey, maybe I should like get a plan together. Maybe I should like have a vision. Where am I going in my life? What do I want to do? And how am I going to get there? Because I'm not going to get there sitting on my ass just doing stupid shit, like or waiting for the universe to manifest it for me. Like, no, clearly that's not working. It's time to do something. And, and through the years, you know, starting to practice cultivation, practice energy cultivation and, and sexual Kung Fu every single day for you know almost 11 years now, eventually I came to the point where my whole experience of this, my whole experience of sex and pleasure completely transformed. There was like, for me now, there's no, there's no question of like, Oh, am I going to ejaculate today? Am I going to get off? You know, Oh, I just really like to watch some porn, or just shoot a load and just, you know, release some stress. Like it's not even a question for me now. It's I tr I've transitioned to a completely non ejaculatory experience of sex, of sexual pleasure. And you know what? It enhanced my experience of pleasure. And this is the same thing I hear from all you guys who do this work that you learn to really ride the waves of sexual pleasure in a different way. You learn to allow that energy to build in your body, to remain in your body. And it becomes, you harness it, you store it, and you have energy to do other things. Doing this work, I, I got rid of all my addictive habits. I stopped drinking alcohol you know, almost 10 years ago. I stopped smoking weed every day. Stopped, I completely stopped all substances. Like, oh, okay, now sometimes I have some green tea. That's, that's probably my, my biggest vice now is occasionally in the morning, I have some green tea. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, and I'm not trying to brag. It's just like, this is what happens because at the root of any addiction is a dissatisfaction. It's a depletion. It's, it means that something is out of alignment in your mind and your body. And you're trying to numb yourself because you're not facing your true self and you're, you're cut off from your true being, your true essence, your connection to the source of all things, the universal energy the nature, you know, nature. And so when you tap back into that, when you tap back into your sexual energy as a alchemical engine to combust that process, I mean, you feel good. You don't need to take drugs. You don't need to watch porn. You just, you feel good. You feel like a human being, not a, not a AI program zombie, like, you know, the new humanity, human, human 2.0. And so So my intention now is to really just put this stuff out there. You know, I, I, I've had my YouTube channel for like seven years now. I have 800 plus videos. I just want to share this work. And another thing that has really, you know, something I, I care about is like making this practical, making it understandable. Something I hear from a lot of people is like, you know, that I break this stuff down a little more clearly. And that's great because again, when I was learning this stuff, it was like, I'm trying to read these books. I'm like, what the fuck does this mean? Like, what, what is what? And I don't want to be the like, the ultra spiritual, perfect guru. Like, no, I just, I'm, I'm just a human, just a dude, just sharing this stuff. I just happen to have a strong interest in this and put a ridiculous amount of time and effort into it. And I want to share that with you guys. So the world needs this. People are, well, we'll say people are confused to say the least in this time and age. And one of the biggest wounds, one of the biggest imbalances in humanity is the distortion of their sexual experience, the distortion of their sexuality. It is literally a destructive force on this planet, this perversion of, of sexuality and sexual energy, and it's used for destruction. And you've been programmed into it. It makes you easy to control. You just, you know, of course, you're not going to do big things with your life and like 
influence a lot of the people when you're a slave to your impulses. You're just, you're just, uh, you're just a, you're a cow in a caged field. It, it feels like you're free range, but there's a fence there. It's keeping you in. It's keeping you contained. So when humanity taps into their sexual energy, harmonizes it, learns to express it freely in a beneficial way, the world's going to change overnight. You know, so I'm doing my part. I'm doing my part, guys. All right, continuing on with sexual cultivation. The alchemical path is what this truly is. It's an alchemy. And your sexual energy is the fuel for that alchem al alchemical process to transform by mind, body, and spirit. And so we'll talk a little bit about like Taoist sexual cultivation, some of the, the technicalities, the, the path of it. What's the path of it? And as well as some of the tantric stuff as well. Because again, people always ask me, what's the difference between Taoist practice and tantric practice? Now, I've definitely gone much heavier into the Taoist path because it's just been a lot more practical and I enjoy the practice a lot more. But, you know, I've, I studied Tantra traditions as well. You know, I learned the Cobra Breath, son. I, I was reading, what was the book? Jewel in the Lotus or something years and years ago. And like this, this Tantra system, I forget the name of the Tantra system, but it talks about the Cobra Breath and all this is like, okay, here's some of the, the general things, but oh, what really unlocks is the Cobra Breath. It's the most powerful practice ever. And if you are ready for it, it's going to blow your fucking brains out. So you have got to pay a guru I think it's like two thousand or eight thousand dollars to learn the Cobra breaths. I'm like, well, shit, you know. All right. Well, fast forward a few years, I happen to find someone who was teaching this Cobra breath. This oh, this this sought after on a pedestal Cobra breath. Fortunately, I didn't have to pay eight thousand dollars. You know, I'm, I'm <laughs> but I finally learned it. I'm like, okay, this is basically exactly what I've been doing, just like a very subtle difference. I was like, okay, and this is typical. This is typical in the stuff where something's so like mystified and like, oh, this is the secret of all secrets and blah blah blah. And it's like. The truths are simple. All this work is actually very simple. It's just, you know, we're not used to the, the type of mind-body connection that these practices entail. So anyways, in the Taoist practice, this starts with the lower Dantian. This is an energy center in your belly. And it's also referred to as the cauldron, the furnace, uh, the the ding, is it the ding, the lu? I forget the, the, the Chinese term for it. And, you know, it's, it's easy to be really poetic with the stuff. Like, okay, yeah, sure, there's a cauldron. So I visualize in my mind, there's a fire burning on a thing, blah, blah, blah. But after years of practice, started to experience this. I was like, oh, yeah, the Dantian, it truly is a cauldron because you start to feel it. When I learned how to really activate my Dantian, like you feel a heat, a bubbling, a vibration. It feels badass. And so it's like, yeah, it feels like something's cooking there. So the lower Dantian is, it's like the battery. It is the power center of your energy body. It's the battery and the engine to drive through it. And the first steps, how this relates to sexual practice, it's all going to, it's all going to come together. It's all going to come together. Bear with me. How this relates to sexual practices. Well, if you want to build something, if you want, if you want to do alchemy, which is a process of cooking things, essentially mixing ingredients to make something, you know, something else. You need a container to do that. And this is one of the big problems a lot of people run into on whatever path that they're on is they don't have a container. Like, okay, I'm doing all this breath work practice. I'm doing Wim Hof. I'm doing visualizations. I'm doing yoga, all these things. That's great. That's great. I'm, I'm activating some energy, but then what, where does it go? It just, it's gone. You, you spend it by the end of the day. And then tomorrow you're starting from, 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 uh, the ground up all over again. So by cultivating the lower Dantian, you have a container, you have a battery, you have something to store this energy that you're working with. And semen retention is important for this because you're turning your focus back inwards. As ejaculation is a waste of our vital life force as men, we waste our, our life force in a lot of other ways. It's not the only way you can waste it. It's a big one, but you know, too much thinking, too much worrying, overworking, it's overstressing, over you know, eating the wrong foods, blah blah blah. A lot of these are related to sensory, sensory things. Like everything's out here, and I've got to like throw myself out and go go out here and get things and th overthink. Just it overstimulates. We're scattering our energy. We're throwing it all over the place, and it's it's not an infinite supply. So eventually, it dries up, right? And so this path of alchemy is about, and this this carries very much over into sex. 
and the sexual experience as well. Because what is porn training you to do? It's training you to like, look at these body parts. Look what's out here. Oh my God. And I got to bust my load all over those tits. And oh, like, it's, it's all external. It's pulling your energy out of your body. And that's what ejaculation is. You're programmed to release release, 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 release. Like, of course, you're only going to age and get older every day when all you're doing is spending your energy. You got to build it back up, son. So we practice quiescent meditation to bring our awareness back within the body, to seal the senses and rebuild your chi, essentially. So <laughs> we build this dantian. Basically, you, you know, the Dantian's a container, all right? You focus on the Dantian through meditation. It builds. She starts to build. Oh, right, right. And you need some jing to do this. And when you're just shooting your jing all over the place, you're not. You're going to have trouble building the Dantian field. You need a little more oomph to it. So retaining your semen plus working out the Dantian, it starts to already redirect that energy somewhere in your body. This is one of the issues men run into practicing semen retention is they don't know what to do with the energy because they're just doing the same shit they did before minus ejaculating and their body's not prepared to handle it and they just become horny assholes like just fucking horny irritable over emotional triggered you know fight or flight state assholes like i see it all the time i've been there so this at least gives you something to start to put that energy into start to move it a little bit up to build that dantian field all right i i spent a lot more time than i probably needed to the lower dantian but it is an, it is an important part of this so once the Dantian's in place, essentially what's happening with the Dantian work is that, yeah, you're building your battery, but it's also thickening and compressing this chi. You know, it's like, you can think of most people's energies like, like uh, when people start doing Qigong, like, oh, it feels like a tingling. I feel a little, a little tingling in my spine, just the slightest sense of a tingle. It's like, okay, yeah, that's, that's weak chi. That's like most people's, their chi level, their chi pressure, we could say. Well, when you start to thicken and build the chi in the dantian, and this can be you know a process over several years, it gets thicker and thicker, and that's when you start to experience your chi like, holy fuck, my hands feel like they're lit up with hydraulic fluid that's like buzzing and and radioactive. It's crazy. That's what your chi feels like when it gets a bit thicker, when it gets a bit stronger. And now, now that we've got the dantian established, we can use that thick field of chi to pressurize open the channel system the energy channel meridian system and this is the it's an important part because you got to have somewhere to, for the energy to go you've got to have a network in place for it to flow through so what this does is sets the stage for sexual cultivation. And, and the process is in itself an aspect of sexual cultivation because you are working with sexual energy non-directly often, just you know, bringing that, that raw jing up into the lower Dantian field. But this was the big breakthrough for me. It was like, oh shit, when you do all this work, because it takes, you know, it takes mind-body training to build the Dantian field, standing in these Qigong postures, opening up the energy channels. It's a process. But once you develop that skill, that naturally unlocks the sexual practices for you. Boom. I'll get back into this in a moment. And essentially what we're doing, so we've got the Dantian field. Now we've got chi building up because we're meditating in there on a hopefully regular basis. We're rebuilding our chi every day. We're gaining energy every day, we're feeling more youthful, more vital. Our testosterone is getting higher. You're getting hornier. You're getting healthier. You're getting more driven. You're getting shit done. This is the path of alchemy. It's exciting. It's exciting, you know? Now we want to learn to redirect our sexual expression into an upwards internal expression. So coming back to that, we're just scattering, skeet shooting our energy all over the place. Well, through these meditative practices, you reprogram your energy to, oh, stay within your body. This is a big part of working with the energy channels. It is, it essentially creates a boundary. It creates a container, an egg container, if you will, to circulate your energy through. So instead of, you know, most people's, how's most people life, life force flowing? Like if you had the yin eyes, you know, the energy eyes to see people's energy field, it's just like, just, you know, it's trickling out of here. It's, it's leaking out of their sexual centers. Just, 
But you look at a cultivator with the eyes to see, and you're going to see coherent fields of energy, almost like gyroscopic counter-rotating energy fields of like electromagnetism. Electromagnetism is a toroidal field with a spiral, and it pulls things in. So you have a strong field of gravity, so to speak, that keep your energy contained with it. And what does that do to your sexual experience? So what happens now is you're having sex. It's getting, oh, oh yeah, that sweet tickle. Oh, well, guess what? You can move that sweet tickle through your spine. You can move that sweet tickle through your whole body. So instead of only a, a build up to an ejaculation, it's now a full body build up and a build up and a build up and a build up because when your whole energy, when your whole body is an extension of your sexual organ, which is essentially what you're doing is you're rewiring your sexual center to the rest of your body by working with the energy channels. Now you have a lot more space to hold arousal, oh, to hold sensation. And this is also part of the spiritual path. It truly is. Because when you redirect your sexual desire up to the higher energy centers, it changes the form of it. it changes the form from just this like oh, raw animalistic, oh, I want to fuck energy, which has a lot of power in it. There's a lot of power in it. But now we change it, we rise it up an octave and ooh, it's like it's like refining. It's take you you take the raw ore and you you take the gold out of it, you bring it up to the heart center, and it refines and activates the heart center plus the sexual energy with this expansive, juicy, sticky, well, sticky in a good way. I don't know, I don't know if that was a word to use, but your heart field becomes powerful. You become heart, more heart-centered. Your intuition expands. You develop morality. You don't just become some, you know, just egocentric victim consciousness, screw everyone over just to like feel a little bit better, as a lot of people do these days. You know what I mean? You start to care. You're like, you know what? Maybe there's more to life than just sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And those are great things, but there's more. There's more. Maybe there's, maybe there's love. Maybe there's compassion. Maybe there's purpose. Maybe I want to give something back to the world. So this happens when you... You get the heart center activated. Oh, it feels so nice. It feels so lovely. But that's not it, kids. There's more. You bring it up to the brain. You bring it up to the pineal gland, the, 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 the pituitary, the hypothalamus, and this enhances the secretion of your upper glands. So here's an interesting thing. This, this is something that, this is my take on this. You know, you, you hear of the like, um, the Taoists call it returning the gene to the brain. One of the functions of the microcosmic orbit practice. Whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. Herbal coffee break. Herbal coffee break. Oh, 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 we got we got the goods today. So if you you know have been following this type of work, you're probably familiar with the concept of like bringing the sexual energy up to the brain. And there's a huge misunderstanding in people doing this practice that the semen itself moves up the spine and into the brain. Well, there's no physiological pathway for that to happen. I hate to break it to you. There's no such thing as ejaculation. There's no such thing as, this is another huge misunderstanding is people are using either like the squeezing the pelvic floor at the point of no return or uh, <laughs> the million dollar point, just fucking jamming it in there to stop the, the valve from releasing the fluid. They're doing these things and thinking that, oh yeah, the, the semen's going up my spine. It's a dry orgasm. No, it's going into your bladder, bro. It's Pointless method. But Jing Chi Shen. Jing Chi Shen is uh, different forms that energy takes on. Energy exists in different forms. I mean, our bodies are made of energy. Everything's made of energy. But it can exist in different forms, much as water can be a liquid. It can be a, a solid. It can be a gas. The Jing is the ice form. The Qi is the water form. And the, the Shen is is the gas form, these different states. So what you're doing with these alchemical practices is you're essentially steaming your sexual energy. You're steaming the raw energy of your semen. You're extracting the essence of it. And that's moving. So now it's, it's changing into chi. It's moving up. That's what's moving up the spine is the essence of that semen, not the actual semen. So it's moving up your spine. You, this is what you're circulating through the body. You bring it to the glands of the brain and it starts to crystallize in there. And it creates various hormonal secretions. I mean, I've had full blown like DMTs trips type experiences doing this stuff. It's crazy. You don't need drugs when you do cultivation, son. You just got to work hard, get good grades, eat your, eat your beef liver and fucking, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying here. Um, yeah, 
So, so, so it's like that the gene, a solid form, turns into a gas, rises up the spine, crystallizes in the brain. Maybe it turns back into gene, back into a, a hormonal substance in the brain, which then gets secreted in the salivary glands in the mouth, your saliva. You swallow it down. Boom. Your sexual energy is now ultra refined. It's moving through the body. And you get consciousness expansion. You start to develop more intelligence. You start to develop a sense of higher dimensions. I know it's easy to say uh, airy fairy woo woo stuff, but like, bas what this means to me is, you develop a more direct con a direct connection to source. Most people don't have this. Most people rely on someone else. Like, oh, what's? Oh, I need this person's. You know, <laughs> it's the priest, it's the guru, it's the 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 new age channeler channeling fifth dimension, whatever it is, people rely on something else. And guess what? That's not a connection to source. That's a connection to someone else. And they may be just as screwed up or even more screwed up than you are. Some people just hide it really well. That's been my experience. So this it's an activation of your higher faculties. This is the unlocking of higher level of humanity. And you start to, this journey of, of cultivation, you start to become very independent. You start to become different than other people because you're no longer just following the herd bullshit that's programmed in, and all and all like major followings of of you know trending things. It's just this mass mentality that people just get stuck in, and they're letting someone else's belief system guide their life, and that's fine. That's what you want, but like this is not how transformation occurs. This is not the way of nature. Nature is the way of uniqueness. It's the way of finding your unique expression. No two trees are alike in nature, but look at earth. How many humans are alike? You know, they're trying to look alike. Anyways, it makes you more unique. It makes you more tapped into your, you, your you, expression of source. And then you have something valuable to give back to earth. Okay. All right. So basically, we open up the energy channels, pressurize the Don Tien, mix the sexual energy in with that. Oh, energy body's online. Oh, it feels good. The Tantra path, and, and there's a lot of similarities here in Tantra. Because Tantra is it's sim it's it's essentially a lot of the same things. Don't ejaculate, don't ejaculate frequently. Use that sexual energy. I'm talking about the the kundalini, this energy dormant within the base of the spine, bringing that up the body, bringing up the central channel. There's a lot of misunderstandings around Kundalini. Maybe I'll, I'll talk about there in a moment, but same thing, ascending essentially the sexual energy up the spine. Uh, yes, this live will be saved. All these lives are on my YouTube. They're on my Instagram too, I believe. I, I would I would check out the YouTube ones, higher quality, but you know, it'll be there. The Tantra path is much more focused, however, one of the big differences between Tantra and, and Taoism is Tantra is very central channel, very spinal fire path based. It's it's all about the spinal pathway, the central channel, the Shushumna, uh, you know, the, the Nadis, Sushumna, Pingala, Ida. Um, these, these are basically the, the Chiang Mai, the thrusting channels, the Taoist practice, central channels, left and right channel. And this is only 25% of the process. This is why I really heavily favor the Taoist practice because just this upward spinal pathway, uh, it's only 25% of the process. And for understand that like these are old maps. These practices, I mean, it's amazing they've gotten this, you know, they're, they're still around today. You know, thank, praise the Tao that we have access to these practices in these modern age that hasn't been, you know, completely destroyed like a lot of ancient <laughs> information has been. But I think some of these are incomplete. These are old maps. Uh, things may have been lost. So the other 75% is the downward path, bringing the energy back down. This is microcosmic orbit, baby. Boom. And what happens here is, yeah, there's this raising of the sexual energy, turning into spiritual energy. Boom. Crown opening. Oh, chorus of angels. Oh, heavenly glow. It's fantastic. It's blissful. It's incredible. But but then what? You know, what about your earthly life? If you're just it's, you know, just up, up and up, you would get spaced out. You have trouble holding a job. You don't have any money. Like your physical vitality starts to diminish. So you got to bring it back down. It's a two-way trip. Heaven and earth are a microcosmic orbit in of themselves. Maybe we could say that's the macro orbit. And so now the spiritual energy has been refined. The sexual energy comes up into the crown, higher centers. It's refined. I mean, you can bring in higher to your oversoul energy. That's a whole nother topic. Oh, damn. 
you bring that back down to the lower center. So now what you're doing is it's had this whole journey. Your raw sexual energy went up, refined, higher level cosmic energy. It's it's upped its vibration, so to speak. But then we bring it back down. And now what happens? That spiritual energy, that upper Dan Tian, Ni Wan, uh, crystal elixir field energy, now that is condensing. The Shen is now condensing down into Qi and into Jing and back down into your lower centers, bringing spiritual awareness, being spiritual expansion into your physical being. Now, that's a concept I didn't see a lot in the spiritual paths, uh, because rather than just trying to escape and get out of here, I got to get to heaven, got to get to, got to just go 5D, man. Um, you're becoming more human, but you're bringing this higher level consciousness into this form. So you're fucking anchoring yourself, anchoring all experience the most expansive highest level versions of yourself into this physical vessel. And that to me is the biggest, the biggest path. Uh, and then the other 50% is the leg and arm channels. <laughs> we're, we're going deep today. I like it, but I mean, this is, you know, this, this is my life. This is my, this is like the, the, the day, a day in life conversation with me. Let's talk about the arm and leg channels because this is left out of the tantric path as well. And it's, it's nice. It's nice to have that. This is a big part of our kind of horizontal human physical plane experience. Uh, your leg channels are important because well, you walk on the earth with them. It's your connection to the ground. It's your, your grounding. It's also your ability to walk through life, to have a strong support for yourself in this physical being, have a support foundation for yourself and those around you. You have strong legs. I mean, this this goes, we can get we can deep with this. You know, in martial arts, true power comes from the legs and the hips. It's your, your base. So the more you can open those channels, the more grounded you're going to be. And you can actually hold more. You can hold more as well when you got the leg channels open. That's a big part of the, the Taoist cultivation process is building up the legs. And the arm channels. I mean, that's your exchange. You you reach, you, you, you take things in, you push things away. It's exchange. When I really got my arm channels opened up, uh, a lot of things changed for me. That's when a lot of my blockages around abundance and receiving financial abundance like just blew open. It's kind of mind-blowing. And also... They're kind of the steering wheel for your chi, your hands. When you learn to connect the hands to the Dan Tian, you have a steering wheel, so to speak, to function with the engine, the engine aspect of the lower Dan Tian. Arms, legs, spine, up and down, heaven and earth. It's everything. It's a continuous process. So, this is basic activation of the energy body. And this is both, you know, tantric Taoist path is, well, the tantric path most so is just like, like stoke the fire, stoke that burning desire and bring up the, the spine for the transcendent experience. That's great. The Taoist process is build the chi, store the gene, build the Dantian field, uh, refine and pressurize it, use that to open up the meridians. Coming back to my point I was making about this naturally. So see, there's a lot of questions. I'm all, I'll, I'll get to the questions here in just a moment. Thanks for being here, guys. Good to see everybody. This process naturally unlocks the sexual practice. Because when you're doing this work, ejaculation control becomes natural. It becomes natural because now uh, non-ejaculatory orgasms become natural, separating orgasm from ejaculation because you spend hours doing these meditative practices. You're feeling your Don Tian. You're opening up your energy channels. It's a whole different universe experience. You're learning to hold your mind within the body, seal the senses, and just like be here within your own microcosm of the universe. You have a whole universe within your body, but you're out here trying to chase, you know, TikTok thoughts, whatever. Um, these skills directly transition to sex. And this was the game changer for me because I was trying to learn just the sexual practices without any foundations. And of course, I wasn't having success. But after working with my Don Tian, opening up my microcosmic orbit, it was easy. It was like, oh, I'm basically just doing Qigong. I'm basically doing what I've been doing, but I'm just doing it during sex now. Like now it gives me something else to focus on instead of, am I going to blow? And, and oh, all this sexual pressure and pleasure is moving through my whole body. And Oh, I'm having undulations in my undulations in my spine. I'm speaking in tongues. How la, la, la. it's feeling great. It's feeling great. And that is the path. That is the path. Because again, to 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 kind of reiterate, well, this may be new if you've this if, if this is the first thing of mine you've watched, you know, it's it'd be an interesting starting point, but it's great. It's great. We're, we're breaking it down. As a man. 
what causes an ejaculation is you don't have an escape valve for the pressure that's building up in your balls, your pelvic floor, and your cock. And what's what's the only pressure release valve? Well, it's your urethra. And, ugh, sticky sneeze. Ugh. The microcosmic orbit is now your release valve. It's opened. The more open it is, the more pressure, the more chi pressure you have, the easier it's going to be to just blow that, blow it, blow that energy right up your spine instead of out the penis. And it becomes a simple, like, you know, initially it's like, yeah, there's certain muscular control and muscular relaxation, relax the pelvic floor, don't squeeze the pelvic floor. You know, just, that's a huge difference between any, everything I learned. And ejaculation control, because you have all this mind, you're working with your energy channels, you're like, okay, there's too much pressure here, there's a blockage here, let's release that, release that, open up this chi field here, open up the nervous system here. That's what you're doing during sex. You're like, oh shit, there's a lot of pressure down here. Fuck, I don't know how much more of that I can take. And it's like, okay, let's let's oh, let's bring that up here. Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, now I can keep going. Ah, thank God. Okay, it's oh, 30 minutes in. Oh shit, I better release some more. Sweep the mind through the body. Open up the channel. Bring the semen energy up the spine, and you can literally have sex forever. You can literally have sex forever. So. Basically, the deeper you go into the, the cultivation aspect, the, the nei gong, the internal skill and training, the more success you will have with these sexual practices as well. And this may sound like complicated or a bunch of like horse shit, you know, I don't know, but I get it. Just, this, is my, this is my daily tangible reality. Um, give me a second, guys. I forgot to plug in my, my MacBook. We'll take, a, we'll take a 30 second beverage break, grab my charger, and I'll be right back. Just, just sit with that. Just sit with everything I just dropped on you. Process that for a moment. But we we're, we got more. We got more. Ah. Okay, where was I? Let's finish this by talking about dual cultivation. Oh, this is spiritual sex, baby. Oh, 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 this is where the rubber meets the road or where the unrubbered skin meets the, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Because sex, I mean, you know, all right, I'll just say it. Sex becomes much more conscious intentional because this all this path i just mentioned all these things i just threw a lot out there but when there's a partner doing this with you whew, what a different dynamic let's contrast let's let's okay we'll, we'll set the stage for this first let's talk about the kind of the more the more normal normal which isn't very normal in my opinion but it's what we've been conditioned into and it's what is the norm here in our society currently what sex looks like in a relationship. Ah. <sighs> well, it starts out fiery, passionate, attraction. Attraction builds. You meet your partner. <gasps> you see their, their twinkling eyes. Did she, did she wink at me? Does she find me attractive? And then you start to date. <gasps> Things get romantic. Oh. I think I, I think they love me. I think I love her. I want to bang her. She's hot. Whatever it is, you know what I mean. And then, sex happens. Initially, it's exciting. It's passion. It's like, oh fuck yeah, this is amazing. And then, honeymoon phase. It's so, it's so great. So elated. Oh, so many feel good chemicals running in my body. And then, three months in, maybe six months, maybe less a year, maybe even two years. Eventually, the shit comes out. The initial physical attraction starts to dry up and you, you just get used to seeing their physical features and you start to now see flaws. You start, you start to look for new things like, oh, okay, well, what about their flaws? Ooh, I don't like, I don't like this aspect. And, and you get into your unconscious patterns, d d polarity becomes dispersed. You stop acting, you know, in a certain way and start like the typical pattern for the man is to get into the nice guy patterns. Um, 
stop making decisions, stop kind of taking leadership, and then attraction dries up. All of a sudden, sex isn't so good. All of a sudden, there's a lot of conflict. There's a lack of interest. You start being interested in other people. And like, well, maybe I need to be polyamorous. Maybe I need a new lover. And yeah, that'll start the whole cycle all over again. That's fantastic. But, well, one of the big things here as well for men is like, I'm just ejaculating during sex every time. I'm I'm dispersing my life force over time. I'm becoming more and more depleted. And subconsciously, I'm almost feeling like this woman is taking it from me. They're, she's a vampire. She's taking my energy. And I, don't, I'm, I have res resentment now. This is a lot of people's relationships. Where does it end? It ends in divorce, it ends in heartbreak, it ends in broken families, all kinds of shit, you know? It's like, this is, you know. And, you know, again, whatever path works for you, that's fantastic. But what could this look like instead? How this all carries over into sex and relationship? There comes another aspect, the cultivation. Cultivation isn't easy. It requires hours of, and hours of practice. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a daily process, you know? can't just dick around. You got to be focused. You got to do your meditation. You got to do your qigong. You got to you got to manage yourself. Same thing with relationship, you know? People are just unconscious about managing the relationship, keeping the fire burning, keeping the attraction burning, keeping the polarity there, keeping the um the newness of it in a certain sense. Being able to see your partner like it's the first time every time, you know, it's it's not easy to do, but that's the cultivation of it. And sex holds infinite pleasure, infinite variety. See, most people, we, we, we need variety to enjoy things. We need like to feel like we're experiencing something new to continue to enjoy something, right? Otherwise, we just get bored of it. And the reason people get bored of their partners is because it's just the same thing every time. And they're just often approaching sex in a very superficial way, just trying to get off. And like, well, now I need a, I need a hotter chick because a lot of this is porn conditioning too. You're used to like, okay, I watched this video for 10 minutes. I'm, I'm bored of this face. I need, to, I need a new body to look at. And then it's, you know, before long, it's like every 30 seconds, you're looking for a clip just to find the right one to just ejaculate to. Then you're like, fuck, I just spent three hours. Like, whew, goddamn. This carries over into your relationships. You know what I mean? So. You learn to harmonize your energy, you and your partners. You learn to face your own, like, self-sabotage patterns, your own shadows, your own, like, how am I, like the big thing I've been working with for men and working with myself is how am I stepping out of my masculinity? How am I stepping out of my leadership, my strength, my assertiveness, my directness, my authenticity, just like being like, this is who the fuck I am. This is what I want. Let's do it. Here's the plan. And if you don't like it, fine. We're not a fit for each other. You know, there's just, there's all this manipulation, indirectness, oh, over emotionality. And well, if I indirectly do it. Maybe they'll feel obligated. You know, it's, it's, it's fucking bullshit that's sabotaging your life. Okay. So basically the path of getting back overall, and like, you know, we could, there's all kinds of places we could go with this, but keeping this on the path of like energetic cultivation, sex becomes a way to cultivate with your partner. You're generating, you are generating tremendous energy during sex and you can generate even more, like you're doing all your, these meditation practices, you're opening up channels, all these things. Fantastic. You've got a, an energetic infrastructure to prepare you this type for this type of experience with a partner. And now you're doing it together. It's like, holy shit, the energy's times 10. And you're drawing that through your channels, refining that energy. It's, I mean, the words can't describe. It's, it's, it's expansive to say the least. It's explosive. It's pleasurable. It's deeply fulfilling. It's life changing. It's healing. It's there's a lot of words we could say here. That is quite a contrast. In like, oh, I'm horny. You look hot. I'm gonna thrust into you until I ejaculate, then fall asleep. Like, you know, that's great. If that, you know, but this is a whole different experience. This is, it's like every for me. A lot of my my sex session sex sex sessions with my partner are like just fucking their journeys, their journeys, their journeys deep within myself, journeys, sometimes like cosmic orgasm experiences. Like it's a lot, it's a lot that can happen. So this has massive implications for your health, your happiness, your creativity. And you feel so filled up. You have so much chi, you have so much energy that it's, it's oozing out of your eyes, your ears, your, you have, you have no choice, but to put it out into the world. You're doing big things. You, you're more creative. It's like, People 
in the world right now are so fucking depleted. They can barely get out of bed in the morning. They can barely continue on with their work. It's just like they need to drug themselves. They need to find entertainment on a on an electronic screen just to like get through the day. You know, that's it's depletion and in, in it's a big problem in the world. Well, this becomes a way to overcome that, to empower yourself, to charge yourself up to unprecedented levels of aliveness. I feel I wake up in the morning and I feel good. I feel happy being who I am. I feel stoked about my life. I feel excited for the things I'm creating in my life. And you know, sure I have my my difficult days, but like, you know, I'm doing it. Doing my best. I'm doing my best. And this work will really help you to not just like survive and like get through things, but fucking thrive and create a life truly worth living, having the ultimate human experience. And you can then do cool things with your life and leave this world a little better than you found it. That's what it's really all about. So yeah, how to do this. <laughs> Again, I mean, this is what I'm teaching. It's cultivation path, sexual Kung Fu. I've got a whole system of how to do this from start to finish. And, um, you know, there's a lot, there's tons of material on my, my YouTube. A good starting point is the, the microcosmic orbit meditation, testicle breathing, start moving energy through your channels. I will say that uh, my multi orgasmic man course is a complete training in this process and it's opening soon. Right. Oh, it's opening soon. It's opening soon. I'm excited. Oh, uh, so, 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 so stay tuned. Stay tuned. It's coming soon. And there's a ton of questions. I'm going to get into these questions now. Before that, I want to I want to pay respects to one of my teachers, Dr. Newman Lin, who recently I learned recently passed away. Hell of a guy. Hell of a guy. Um where to, where to begin with this one? Basically, he had I learned a lot of incredible things about sexual practice from him. Um he's the one who kind of planted the seed in that pelvic in me that the kegeling and pelvic floor squeezing is not a good thing to do and that that will increase premature ejaculation. Um, he had a website, unfortunately all of it, he had this massive headache of a website, like millions and millions of pages of links and, and tons of information, you know, um, unfortunately that's all gone. It's just, he, he passed away. Maybe, you know, it, it's, it's gone. It's gone. And I actually had lost another teacher in the past year, uh, Stephen Gray, who was living in South America, uh, Ecuador, I believe. And, Kind of a similar thing. He ha he was a lineage holder in Tian Shan Negong, a powerful system of, of Taoist internal cultivation, and um, he's gone. And and part I see part of my purpose as being archiving a lot of this material of the past because I mean, this thing. This is what happens: is people are concerned about other shit. Like, well, you know. Right, let me let me keep it focused here. Basically, a lot of the ancient ways are they're disappearing, and it's up to us to maintain it. So, like you know, if this if what I'm talking about sounds interesting you interesting to you, consider dedicating yourself, or at least diving in, doing the work, and like because if we don't practice this, if we don't share this with the world, it's going to disappear. So, little little just little, what's going on. Thank you, Dr. Lin. Thank you, Stephen Gray. With that, let's get into Q&A. It's Satish. Shaban says, can you talk more about the arm channels and abundance, or is there a YouTube video about it? So check out my YouTube video on eight extraordinary meridians. I have a theoretical video on it, and then a guided qigong practice of it um and i think i basically said you know it's like yeah your arm channels these are, i mean these are deeper there's a lot of arm channels like the superficial um acupuncture meridians but the deeper channels are the eight extraordinary meridians these are like your core infrastructure of your energy body so working with them um it it helps to balance out a lot of your deep deep patterns, deep psychological things, deep ancestral things, things given to you by your, you know, your parents, your, your ancestors, things like that. So check out the eight extraordinary meridians video. That'll be a resource for that. Alex Katsanos, what's up, brother? Levent, unstruck. 
Okay, Unstruck's asking, is kundalini energy and sexual energy different energies? I'm just going to answer this as, as, as from my own experience, from my own experience. This is one of the things that run into a lot with this kind of stuff is that there's all this information like this. Oh, it was written in a book. Now it's like set in stone. Like, um, when I was first learning this stuff, it was like, well, the book said it must be this precise thing. Therefore, this is what it is. But you know, the dude who wrote the book was just a human. That's what his teacher told them. It's what their teacher told them, or it's what they found through their practice. You know, it's, it's either one of the two, either they discovered it from experience or someone just said it and they just regurgitated it. It's, 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 it's how things are. It's how information is. So my own experience of this, I, I'm very experiential. I'm like, have I experienced this? What's my experience of it? You know, I, I, I'm not much of a, just like a copy paste person anymore. Like this person said this, therefore it's truth. Kundalini, my experience of Kundalini, this, so from my own like reading of, you know, what like the ancient masters talk about it and then my own experiences of it, my feeling is that Kundalini is a very charged energy that blasts open your central channel, which gives you an unpolarized awareness. I mean, the central channel is, yeah, there's no polarity in it. Um, the Sushumna. And when this kundalini, kundalini energy rises up, it activates an altered state of awareness, a heightened state of awareness. And you're never the same afterwards. You know, it's like the, you took the red pill. The, the veil has been uncovered for you. You know, I had a Kundalini experience in 2007 and no, no, 2008, sorry, 2008. I was 19 years old, fucking blew my mind, changed my life. I was never the same, completely changed the trajectory of my life, full on multidimensional experience. And since then I've had a few spontaneous, I would say Kundalini events where it's, it's a similar thing. There's energy pulsing up my spine and it's you're in an other dimensional state. Now, sexual energy, I can guide that up my central channel and I don't have the same effects. I can guide it up my back channel. Like, yeah, it's warming and it's, it can be hot and like bzz, buzzing and can, you know, it causes some altered awareness and stimulation, but it's not like the Kundalini experience of like, you're on, you know, you're on an LSD trip essentially, you know what I mean? So there is a difference. I can't precisely, you know, it's, it's stuff's energy. We just don't have the tools to truly like kind of dissect these things. I can only speak on what I've experienced with it. So. I, I do suspect they are different energies. Maybe Kundalini is just like a certain concentration of it. I can't say, but they are different energies. Marco Swoosh says, what's well, a good female version of your Instagram page? I don't know, to be honest. I don't spend much time on Instagram personally. I don't spend much time on social media in general, but definitely not on Instagram. Um, I will mention some some female teachers who I think are great. Um, Mika DeVos, she's awesome. I studied with her. She's from she's in Canada. Um, who else? Shashi Saluna is doing some cool stuff as well. So there's just some ones that come to mind right away. Thumos says, hey, Jonathan, I'm curious if you find any benefit from ejaculating. Occasionally, I've seen other teachers in this space sometimes recommend it to do it thoughtfully on occasion. Yes, I do ejaculate on occasion. And I think it's a good idea. Um, I've talked about this a lot, but basically, I hit a point where I start losing benefits from semen retention. Um, and this, this is another thing where like, there, there's so much like obsessiveness and ego <laughs> in a lot of this stuff. And it doesn't help that some, like some of the, some of the uh, like brahmacharya texts and things like, you must retain for 12 years and then you have heightened consciousness and all these. And again, there's a lot of theoretical information and um, my experimentation has led me to find that if I go beyond for me right now, it's about four to six weeks. Actually, if I go beyond that, I lose benefits. I feel less, lower testosterone. My erections get weaker and it's like, well, what's the point? And then if I ejaculate now, I will say that when I do, it's, it's, it's not just like, you know, fucking rub off and shoot it out no it's like at least like 20 30 minutes often much longer of tantric sex we could say i'm drawing the energy up through my spine absorbing 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 and then 
it's like shooting out an, an empty shell. Like I don't even feel like I've ejaculated usually at that point. It's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I'm back to exactly where I was the next day. So having said that, I do think that um, unless you are like meditating for three hour, three or four hours a day doing very advanced alchemical work, then it's going to serve you to eventually ejaculate again. Now, obviously ejaculating every day is harmful, um, but for some, for a lot of men, and a lot of the Taoist texts talk about this too, trying to go too long without ejaculating can be equally harmful. So it's about finding your sweet spot and you will feel great. When you, like I, Again, I feel much better having it in balance than I do when I was like fanatical about it, trying to go as long as I possibly could and like actually losing benefit from it. So benefit from it. So benefit from it. So it's, it's, it is a trial and error process. You have to find what works for you. I don't recommend taking anything I say, just like mindlessly following it. Like you have to use some discernment and like, again, experiment. Like, like, is it true for you? Find out for yourself. Maybe I'm full of shit. It, it could be. <laughs> There's a question on Instagram. Was my Kundalini experience a spontaneous one or resulting from sexual Kung Fu practice? The first one I had in 2008, well, I ate some magic mushrooms and gave me like pulsing energy up the spine, cosmic experience. I tried to, you know, life changing. I tried to make it happen again by taking more mushrooms, but didn't work. Um, and then some of my other ones, one was just random in 2013. I think it was just like, well, I was doing a lot of Kundalini yoga and also was just going through this like intense, intense turmoil. I, I can't really quite say, but I think it was just like a point where some level of me was like, all right, it's time for a change. Let's blow open the next, the next window of, of perception. And a lot of things changed for me after that. And then, um, some other minor episodes as well that were more related to my practice, I will say. Megan, Megan Devax, I'm not familiar with her. Unstruck says, I relate to you, man. I do not crave to watch porn anymore with the Taoist practices. feels like I can channel my sexual energy in a healthy way. It's fulfilling. Yeah, I mean, it's like anything. Once you experience something that's like healthy and fulfilling, it's like you don't go back. It's like, it's like when I started eating healthy organic foods. I was like, oh, I feel so much better. I feel so much healthier. I don't feel like a pile of shit every day. I have so much more energy. It's like, why would I want to eat fucking processed shit? It's just, you just don't go back to it. You know what I mean? And, and some people do, but you know, not me. That's the thing is like people have addictions because they don't have something better. They don't have something that is like holistically making them feel good. So it's like, you've got to find the thing. You got to find the thing that like lights you up in a balanced way. Addictions are just a sign that, you know, you're, you're lacking, you're lacking fulfillment at the deepest core of your being. And you're just trying to numb yourself. Daniel says, if I started semen retention one and a half years ago, my question is what exactly happens when you transcend sexual energy up the spine through breath work? Well, you know, it, it depends because it's not going to be the same every time. And it's like, what type of breath work are you doing? What, there's, there's a lot of factors here. How open are your channels? You know what I mean? It's not like, again, people... And I understand because a lot of people lay it out like, oh yeah, well, on day 30, you experience this. And then, but it, it's not really how it is. It's, it's a unique process for everyone. And it's going to be different every time. Like when I'm circulating sexual energy, it's very different. Sometimes I get like fucking brain cosmic orgasm explosions. And sometimes it's just like a little tingle, you know, anywhere in between. So yeah, you may just feel like some heat and pressure in your head. You may have a cosmic orgasmic spiritual awakening. Like, who knows what's going to happen? Only you can tell. Wise Warrior says, the arousal is sexual energy or it's different of the sexual? Well, the arousal is definitely of your sexual energy. It's a, it's a desire. It's, a, it's also a magnetic, polarized often. It's like attraction magnetism, which sexual, sexual energy has magnetism to it. You know, So yeah, it's, it's all 
based around the sexual energy. Tony is asking, how does this fit with Dr. Dispenza pineal activation breathing? This is just basic yogic method. It's just breathing. Well, what I'm talking about, bringing the sexual energy up to the, to the pineal gland and it activates. It's the same thing as the microcosm war. It's just a different way of doing it. Sometimes a bit more forceful. It can be a bit more forced. It can be a little unbalancing for some people. Yeah, it's just, it's half the microcosmic orbit. I'll say that. Sad bros says, what's a good breathing technique? What's a good breathing technique for what? You know, because it depends what your goal is. If you're talking about for like circulating sexual energy, the simplest, the stupidest, simplest thing is inhale deep into your belly and bring the mind up the back of the body. Like, like, like a movement of water up the back and then exhale, move the mind down the front of the body, place the tongue against the roof of your mouth. This is a stupid, simple, basic level version of running your microcosmic orbit. Unstruck says, so I release, but I'd like to cultivate a little longer. Any advice on how I can cultivate longer? Or is everyone's cycle different? Sexual transmutation practices, especially the like, I will say of the practices on my YouTube channel, Dantian breathing, testicle breathing, these will be very helpful. But it's like, you got to really just, you got to draw the energy out of there. You got to draw it out of there so that it's being put to use other places. Otherwise, it just builds up in your balls and it, it will be released at some point. You know, do Qigong, keep it moving, keep yourself busy, put it into other things. Ego Killer says, I see you burn incense often. Is it good for health? Well, I can't comment on that, but I like the vibe. I like the smell. I like the, the experience, the aroma. I've always liked incense. You know, what can I say? Nisara is asking how to increase time. Increase time with what? You know, context is important. Context is important. Unstruck says, is Tantra the fire tradition? I like to mix the fire and water path together. Yeah, Tantra is definitely a fire path. Blasting up the spine. Ondrej says, can you tell us how to handle the tough part of the relationship? Like, yeah, the intimate things can heal, but when it's the hard thing or harder thing to get to physical connection to make love. So yeah, the difficult, basically the, the disharmonies in relationship. I mean, this is the real work. This is the real work. And this is what everyone, this is what makes everyone run is like, like, Oh, I'm having conflict in my relationship. Must be something wrong. There's, there's something wrong with them. They're not the right person for me. I need someone better. But guess what? This is, it's, it's your own shit. It's your own issues being mirrored to you. It's what it always is. You attract people who help you work out the patterns you have, but most people are unwilling to, to face these things. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. Our ego is strong. So it's, I mean, there's a lot of layers to this because yeah, sometimes you're legitimately in a, an unhealthy relationship, but more often it's, it's an opportunity for you to get to the root of where is this coming from, especially if it's a recurring thing. Like if there's something that keeps coming up in relationships, guess what? If you go to a new relationship, it's going to be the exact same thing. So you might as well face it right now. Um, I will, I mean, I'll share something about two and a half years ago or so, um, or was it three years ago, it was about three years ago, two and a half years, something like that. I was starting to have some issues in my relationship, 
specifically sexual attraction was diminishing. I was, you know, it's like my partner and I weren't having as much sex as I wanted and there just wasn't as much sexual attraction. I was like, you know, what's going on? And it, this really hurt my ego because I'm like, well, I'm the sexual kung fu guy. I'm supposed to be having amazing tantric sex every single day. Like my woman's supposed to be just begging for it. And then this led me on a path of understanding what's going on here. You know, I read the book, No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. And it's like, of course, you know, it, it, this is another funny thing is like, I've, I've been into all this like deep work, deep spiritual you know, cultivation, all these things, but like the most basic shit of like, just like being a man, you know, like very, this isn't like a, a spiritual, crazy advanced esoteric book. It's like the most practical, like, yeah, this is why you're having issues. And so basically it was a real like down to earth experience for me. Um, and made me realize how I was a nice guy. I used indirect communication. I did not state my desires and intentions clearly. I did not just say like, hey, this is what I want. Like, I want to have sex. I want to have more sex. I want more sex. I want to have sex with you. Uh, the book is No More Mr. Nice Guy. Every man should read this book. It's essential. Um, yeah, I realized I was a people pleaser. I cared more about making sure everyone around me liked me and felt, felt, approved, felt approval of me than like just fucking being myself. And that really really transform things for me. So that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest causes of conf conflicts in the relationship is polarity battles or, or ne the neutralization of polarity. And a very common thing is that men are not very masculine. They're not in their masculine and it's, it's not your fault. You were programmed not to be. We didn't have strong male role models. You know, I'm a child of the nineties and it was not and it was not a time of, you know, it was, it's just been a de decline from then. Um, so learning to cultivate your masculinity, your strength, your integrity, to be, to also kind of be this, this, this wild free spirit, like your most important thing should be your mission in life. Living your life, like, like my, one of my philosophies with this is like, I try to just imagine I have unlimited resources, unlimited money, blah, 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 blah. Like, what do I do with my time? Who am I? What things do I want to do? And then start to like live more of that lifestyle. I noticed when I was just like 100% focused on like, like, oh, trying to get my partner to, to be more attracted to me or have more sex with me. It's just like, and the shit I was doing in my old relationships, it was just pathetic. It was just very needy and it was killing polarity. It was killing desire. Whereas instead, when I started focusing on myself, fulfilling my own needs, having fun with my life, hanging out with men, doing just things I enjoy doing and like not caring about trying to please anyone. Naturally, it made me more attractive and it started to create much more polarity and, ex and excitement and passion in my relationship again. This is a big thing I'm, I'm teaching in the Sex God course is is all about stepping into your masculine power overcoming these nice guy people pleasing patterns and having a practice to build polarity with your partner daniel's asking have you heard about tongkat ali or fedogia agrestis if yes have you tried i've taken tongkat i have not taken fedogia i've heard of both of them um, yeah, I've tried, I've tried Tongcat. Ultimately, it's not a good fit for me. Tongcat, number one, it gives me insomnia, no, even at like very small doses. Number two, it created a very irregular, um, kind of testosterone level, libido level. Like I would take it, like it, it is, it is a T booster, but you have kind of a, a, a spike and a crash. That's been my experience with it. I would take it like four days on three days off and like, the second day I would feel like fantastic. Then by the fourth day, it was kind of waning. And then the next, the next three days I wouldn't take it. It was just like a huge drop off in my libido. It was just like, it was very, very up and down. And ultimately, because I took it a while, you know, a few years ago when I was having some libido issues because I had toxicity in my body, which is creating higher levels of estrogen, you know, heavy metals, xenoestrogens, you know, plastics, mold, all kinds of shit. So taking supplements, things like that, yeah, it, it gave me some, some hits to help that a little bit. But what 
truly helped me was getting to the root of like, okay, well, there's toxicity in my body. So like I can try to, you know, it's a similar thing of like, like, yeah, I can try to take these, yeah, they're herbal supplements, but it's still like putting a bandaid on a deeper issue. When I detoxified my body and changed my diet a little bit too, started eating a lot more saturated fats, less, less carbohydrates, um, less uh, completely cut out grains. My amongst, you know, amongst other things, but my libido was like fucking solid baby. And I didn't need to take supplements, herbs. All right. Do I take maca? Maca, maca I enjoy. Yeah. Maca doesn't have like a really strong up down thing for me, but it's a definite, uh, I mean, it's been shown that it, it improves sperm production and yeah, I like maca. I do take it quite frequently. I take the black maca. Pure vibrations is why sometimes I can control ejaculation and go longer. And some days, some days I can't control. Well, why do you, you know, why do you feel happy one day, sad the next? Why do you, you know, we, everything changes. There's, there's, there's cyclical things, but I, I understand because I experienced this as well, especially early on in the path where it was, it was like, I would be like solid in my ejaculation control. Then there'd be like sessions where I just could not control. And it's definitely a, I mean, this stuff takes training, sexual Kung Fu skills, discipline, it's consistency. And you start to understand more and more about like what's affecting you, why it was more difficult that day. And a big, I will say some, some big indications I've noticed. Number one is stress. If you're stress intense, ungrounded, it's going to be more difficult. If you're in your head, really like mental, like maybe you've been like working on a computer, doing scrolling social media, then you go have sex. It's going to be a very different experience. And if you were like out in nature, walking, you know, just listening to the birds sing, feeling the fresh air, and then you go have sex, you're going to be much more grounded, super practical sense. And pelvic floor tension. This is also going to change because if you're having non-ejaculatory sex, the prostate starts to build up fluid, starts to build up prostate fluid. So what I noticed was like, by the time I got to, you know, four weeks, six weeks, whatever, there's a lot more pressure and ejaculation control. It used to get really hard for me around this time. And number one, I was doing Kegels and stuff. So like one of the things with practicing semen retention is there, especially when you're having non-ejaculatory sex, the pelvic floor starts to often like start to hold tension. It's like it starts to get tense, 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 tense. Like your baseline of tension gets higher and higher often. If you're not doing something to counteract that, which is why the pelvic floor stretching, uh, prostate massage is actually a very beneficial thing for this as well. One thing I recommend doing is after every sexual pleasure, non-ejaculatory experience, you get either a tennis ball, or I might have one that's somewhere, or a lacrosse ball, put it under your perineum so it sinks up into that soft area between the between the balls and that and the butthole. And acupress up in there, grind around on it, really get all up in there. That will help to release some of that pressure and prostate fluid. But yeah, over time you'll start to put more together about like why it's up and down sometimes. Potion of Motion says, how could I build my Don Tien? Check out my Don Tien breathing video on YouTube. Courtney Chup, what's up? Raw Beef says Kundalini is mainly about the spine, but she can flow to all parts of the body. Yeah, I mean Kundalini, like I said, it's it it's a it's an energy that travels up the central channel. She's maybe it's we could say it's a form of chi, a certain manifestation of it. Um, you know, there's many different types of energy that flow through your system, many different qualities. Yeah, cheese, you know, it's permeating your whole system. Uh, 
Gianni's asking, what kind of tea are you drinking? This is, uh, it's called Rasa, R-A-S-A, coffee alternative. It's like an herbal coffee type thing. It's really nice. This is the one with no cacao. I can't do caffeine cacao. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice, uh, nice drink. Listen to me. It's asking what should be the focus of Qigong? No focus, focus on breathing, focus on moving energy, meditate. It depends on the practice you're doing. In general, if you're doing a standing Qigong form, you want to focus on sinking the chi. So sinking all the, releasing all tension from your body. So it's like your body's like a bag of water, everything just melts. Melting down, melting down, melting down. You want to make sure you're you're breathing, but not like, okay, I'm inhaling, exhaling. You don't want to be doing like pranayamic breathing, doing Qigong. I mean, there's, you know, some people teach this in Qigong practice, but for most, you're, you're going beyond the physical breath. You're going into the realm of energy. And if you're controlling the breath, it just creates a contrivance and can create stagnance. So you allow yourself to breathe, but don't control it. Relaxation is the biggest thing. And then thinking of sinking everything into the earth and absorbing your mind into your body. The most important points to focus the mind in initially will be the lower dantian, you know, the belly center, uh, the palms of the hands. You'll create a connection between those two points. But the more you can bring your mind into the whole body, like really absorb it like liquid into a sponge, the more it will start to engage your chi. So you want to learn to move without like just, oh yeah, I'm just moving my arms. It's, a, it's, a, it's like the feeling is that you're a bag of water emptying into the earth and it's like that's inflating a balloon that's creating, it's like, that's what's pushing on you. So you're sinking down. Oh, shoulders are sinking down the spine, shoulder blades down as my arms are moving up. Check out my Qigong videos. <laughs> I've got a whole playlist on YouTube. I, I, I made a really great routine the past month or two on my Qigong playlist. Daniel's asking, how is it harmful? Does it cause prostate cancer? Not sure what you were talking about there. instructor fall says what kind of efforts should i make as someone who's conditioned themselves a lot in the normal crappy way i am very reliant on orgasm and have big psychological complex about it yeah i mean it's, it's just a normal experience for a human being um you're addicted to something you have a reliance on it and basically i mean with this specifically It's about finding something better in a certain sense, but it's also it's also about like letting go of this need to have your impulses satisfied. It is what, is what it really comes down to having some discipline, having some you know what maybe I need to be okay with some discomfort. This is one of the things is like we're so trained in our modern world to just be comfortable all the time to like any discomfort we should immediately act on. Like there's there's something wrong with being uncomfortable. You know it's like because. We live in a, a we live in a world of, of comfort, you know, of technological advancement and like abundance. But at the same time, people are more miserable and fucked up than ever. You know what I mean? So obviously, it's it's not doing us good in a lot of ways. So I think what would be beneficial for you is like start to incorporate some activities that really push you, that that push your mind, push your body. You know, intense physical training, cold exposure, something that really like is things that you don't want to do essentially that start to train that it's, it's, I mean, it's like the opposite of the instant gratification dopamine system. It's like, it's delayed gratification. So doing that is helpful as well. But as far as orgasm, I mean, it's a release really looking at this, an orgasm is a release. It's a dispersal. We're talking, I mean, talking about peak orgasm and ejaculatory orgasm, uh, which you just commented on men ejaculation. Yeah. But initially, and this is the recommendation I have for men learning to have non-ejaculatory orgasms, is you got to drop all attachment to orgasm in general. Stop expecting an orgasm and be okay simply with sexual pleasure. So the reason that men become, I mean, people become reliant 
on an orgasm is because it's a release. It's a release of tension. And it, it puts you naturally in the parasympathetic state for like a short period of time afterwards. So it's like, ugh. And it usually just means that you have a lot of stress. You have a lot of tension. You have a lot of like built up and that you don't have an outlet for those things. And so you're making ejaculation your outlet, which is a normal thing to do, but it's depleting you. You know, it's like you're, you're shooting your shooting your kidney sauce all over the place, emptying your battery. So it's, it's not a holistic way of doing it. So you have to ask yourself, how else can I release tension from my mind and body? How else can I get a bit of like release without needing to ejaculate? And this was what I was naturally starting to do, practicing Qigong, yoga, breath work, physical exercise. And then like miraculously doing these things, I stopped desiring ejaculation. I wasn't like trying to stop ejaculating at the time. It just like naturally stopped appealing to me because it felt better to not ejaculate at the end of a sexual pleasure. So hopefully that's helpful. <laughs> can I, Unstruck is asking if I can smell pheromones. I can smell yours through the, through the ethers. Uh, I mean, yes and no. Like I, I can smell the sense of humans and like I find some of my partner's body sense arousing. So there you go, I suppose. All right. What do you do with that Aztec clay? Which which Aztec clay? What are you talking about? You're talking about the bentonite clay? I'm not sure what the context of this or where it's coming from. Um, but I do sometimes take bentonite clay internally, put it in water, drink it. Um, it's good for mold, cleansing mold from your body, which I've had issues with. Yeah, yeah, that was a question. Yeah, so I, I can, when I take it, I'll take it about, um, I'll take about a tablespoon in the morning mixed with water, like eight ounces of water. So chug it down. You want to make sure you have food grade bentonite clay if you're going to do this. And I believe it's calcium bentonite that dissolves better in water. The other one just turns into a clump. I could be wrong on that one though. I forget the form. Maybe look that up. No, it doesn't hurt. It can't make you constipated though. So like make sure you got some fiber afterwards. Jackson is asking, are you familiar with the larger water wheel of Shen? If so, how do you develop it? I mean, it's a term that's probably unique to a certain school and I haven't read that book or seen that system. I'm sure it's like a pretty common practice, but you know, if you, if you explain more like what it is, I know people like to like use the fancy terms and, um, I'm, yeah, I, I, I don't. If I saw the practice, I could tell you. Okay, Andres saying that's the issue, the polarity, the more. The more I love her, more she's escaping, but I still believe in us. So it's all about the work on myself, enjoying myself and live my life. Second thing is the sex. When we started the relationship 10 years ago, the sex was mind blowing. Two hours were not enough. Nowadays I have an issue to stay as long as I want to. It was increasing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so what I'm taking away is that She's if you, like you feel like she's losing interest, something like that. Um, my recommendation is just to really focus on yourself. Like, don't get into a, like a neediness. Like, I need you, please. Beg, begging things like that. Um, Got to be detached. Got to be like, all right, you know, like I'm, I'm fucking awesome. And if you don't want to be with me, that's fine. That's fine. And I know it's it can be difficult to be that way, but the more you focus on yourself, make yourself kind of the center of, of your world right now, and just like do cool things. Like, what do you, you know, what are your dreams? What are your ambitions? Do bigger things and not that like you're doing this, you know, for her, like to impress other people. But like, I don't think that there's anything sexier than a man who's like fucking going after his mission with like, that's the most important thing where it's like, okay, like, you know, 
I'm, I'm with you right now, baby, but like, I got things to do. I got asses to kick. I got places to be, you know, women love that shit. It's like, you know, put that eighties training music on, like get into your inner badass, spend some time with other men, do some martial arts, something, just really cultivate your, uh, uh. it's a time to not be emotional, but to be very in your body, to be logical and just fucking, <clears throat> and your masculine animal, baby. All right, guys, just a few more questions here. Yeah. Yeah, Qigong will be a good one for you, Instructor Fall. Sander Chards is asking, is it smart to do Kegels while penetrating, while sexual, like during sex? Um, no, it's not smart. It's stupid. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a good idea because that is the exact pathway of the nerves, muscular activation that is building up towards ejaculation. And when you start getting a habit, you're probably already doing it like minorly, unconsciously, involuntarily during sex, during sexual stimulation. And if you're, if you start squeezing more and more on top of that during sex, it's programming, well, for, for like immediately it's activating your buildup towards ejaculation. And when you get in the habit of doing that, it gets lodged in your system and you you essentially develop the stress response to sex and you will always be on the climb towards ejaculation. And like, yeah, technically you can, you can stop ejaculation. Like if you're really close to it to, um, if like squeezing a, a Kegel around the edge of ejaculation to, you know, yeah, it will keep you from ejaculating, but now you have this huge buildup, this huge, like electrical charge of tension in your pelvic floor, and you'll be right on the edge of ejaculating out that. So the most efficient and long-term best strategy is to release tension from your pelvic floor. You develop the relaxation response, the pars parasympathetic nervous system pathway primarily, um, and you don't have to squeeze anything. You just relax and like enjoy massive waves of sexual pleasure through your body. Jovial is asking, why are you qualified to say anything? How is your authentic sexual life? Um, how am I qualified to say anything? I don't know. I'm just a fucking dude sharing. I don't know. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't, I don't need to qualify anything. I'm just sharing what I've learned, sharing with the world. Um, how is my authentic sex life? Well, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I have amazing sex. I have sex quite a, you know, pretty much daily. I have multiple non ejaculatory orgasms. I got pretty damn good ejaculation control. My, my wife and I will go for hours and enraptured in sexual bliss. And I want to help other people do this as well. I also have a certification in Taoist sexual cultivation practice. So there's that. <laughs> How is she enjoying it? Um, well, she's enjoying it quite a bit. Let me ask you this. Do you think a woman would rather be with a man who goes for about five, maybe 10 minutes the most and blows his load, then he's like spent, he, he has to recover, spend a day or two recovering. Or do you think a woman would rather be with a man who could go for hours, who can hit her deep spots, just like you know, freaking screw her brains out. And then is ready, you know, as long as you want having multiple orgasms together, she's having mind blowing orgasms. And then like is ready to go an hour later, five minutes later, just 24 seven. There's a difference here. She enjoys it. Harshit is asking how to keep prostate healthy as we age. This is an important one. It's like 50%. It's probably more than that now. But at least 50% of men end up with prostate issues. Number one thing is general health, like detoxification. It's, it's essential. If you're alive in the world right now, you need to be thinking about how to detoxify your body because everything's contaminated. Our food, air, water, 
everything. Check out my video, uh, sexual vitality detox. Because the, the prostate tends to accumulate heavy metals. Cadmium is one that accumulates in the prostate. And if you if you walk outside and breathe air, you're getting cadmium in your system. So you got to get that shit out. Zinc is essential for your prostate. That helps actually release the cadmium and some other things. Um, saw palmetto and pygium root and nettle root are good for your prostate. Prostate massage is really good for prostate. It's a neglected area for men's body. Spending a lot of time sitting down, things just get congested, they get stagnant. You gotta keep the circulation, you gotta keep the fluids moving. So prostate massage, either indirectly by sitting on the tennis ball or lacrosse ball under the soft area of the perineum, or directly by something up the butt, massaging that prostate. Uh, I use a TheraWand, it's a great tool, and it feels great. I do it about once a week or so, and um, really help me practice semen retention not get a huge buildup down there. Hello, man. John says, hello, ma'am. How are you? I need a prostate massage. <laughs> exactly. Um, prostate massage, general health. Also keep poops in a squatting position. I got a squatty potty. It's a little thing where essentially I can squat to poop because that's how our bodies were meant. That's how they were designed to be. They don't have prostate issues in Asia. Why? Well, maybe it's because they squat to poop. Could be so those are some good ways to keep your prostate healthy joey was saying it's not about a man it's about collaboration presence i have men who go forever but no presence still have no fun yeah i mean presence is a huge part of that absolutely it's about being able to connect with the partner as well we have a whole polarity practice where we'll spend an hour and a half just like tuning into each other like sitting in an eye gazing position just i'm in an in a young state a masculine state, she's in a feminine receptive state. And then we maintain that through sex. So yeah, there's, there's massive presence throughout that. And this is the thing I'm teaching as well. Alfon Alfonso is asking, do you practice your Qigong routine every day or how often? Every day, morning and evening, every single day. I haven't missed a day of practice in you know 10 years. Um, I do about... <laughs> I often do like two hours in the morning and an hour in the evening. That's that's an average day of practice for me, but you don't have to be that intense. Started with I started with 15 minutes a day. I'm hardcore, what can I say? Drunk Vigo says, you seem like a genuine dude. I try to be. I try to be. And here's here's the thing I ran into is like, when I was learning this stuff, I would, you know, there'd be these teachers, like I went to Maui, and was, uh, there's this guy. So I was, I was doing a kind of a work trade situation on this kind of a bed and breakfast type area. They had like, like a bunch of land. It was like 10 acres, beautiful beautiful oceanfront land in Maui. It was a magical time. But one of the reasons I, I wanted to go there was the guy who owned the land was a, you know, self-proclaimed Tantra and Taoist master. I'm like, oh, this guy is like, he's the master. He's got it. And, you know, he, was, he wasn't a master. I'll just say that. He was a huge pervert and all kinds of shit. So, and I've seen this pattern of like people who like, they take themselves so seriously. Oh yeah, I'm just so fucking good and so much better than you blow. And it's like, fucking, it's just, it's, just, it's What's the point? What's the point? Just egotistical bullshit. Like everyone's human. Like no one's better than anyone else. So like I can either pretend that I have, you know, I'm, I'm so divine and have a stick up my ass. I can be like, Hey, I'm just a fucking dude. Just I'm, I'm human. Like you, I have my issues and shit. So it's like, you know, I just, I just want to be real because I don't see a lot of people teaching the stuff who are just like real and like lighthearted about it. It's just like, it's always got to be this, you know, the guru trip. Anyways. Jovial is asking me, how did you get into this? Did you have problems before? Oh, I had a lot of problems. I was, I was an addict at substance abuse. I had porn addiction. I had very unhealthy dynamics in my relationships. Yeah, I had problems. And, um, you know, this is, it's a path of cultivation as I 
talked about earlier in this live, just changed every aspect of my life and, and brought me immense fulfillment. And just to reiterate, I see how sexual issues are at the root of a lot of humans' issues on the planet right now. And that if people can find healthy ways of, of expressing their sexual energy and their sexuality, like a lot of things will change. Thanks, Frederick Zifo. Glad you're enjoying it. All right, guys. I got to go. Thanks, everyone, for joining. It has been a wonderful live, a, a wonderful live stream. Thanks for hanging out, bringing your questions, bringing your energy, and I will see you next time. Take care, my friends.